So we are in the middle of the greatest financial bubble that we've ever experienced, at least on the car market side. And I can say that with confidence because over the last three years, used vehicles have done something that they've never done before. They've actually gone up in value and not just a little bit, they've gone up by over 40%. And it's not just the used vehicle market that got hit. New car prices have also gone through the roof. So one thing that's happened on the new car side that's never happened before is that MSRP is actually a good deal in this market. And you know what? We all know that MSRP is not a good deal on a vehicle, but over the last three years, it has actually been hard to find a dealer that will actually sell a vehicle at MSRP. And it's not just vehicles that have been pumped. It's been the stock market. It's been housing. But before we get into all this, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. It really, really helps me out. So I've got this uh, this rubber band here because I want to show you basically just an analogy of how how our economy should work. And every seven years, it's normal for us to have a recession. So you go through this time period where there's an expansion of our economy, uh, velocity of money is moving well, basically just the, the amount of money that's going through the system, changing hands, banks are lending, uh, people are spending money on things. And, uh, and the economy's actually ripping. And it gets to a point where it kind of gets to a, a, a breaking point. And at this point, people are overexposed. Businesses are, are overexposed. They might be paying their workers too much. They might be trying to expand too much for what they're actually doing in the business. And then that's when you see a lot of inflationary pressures come in. And uh, when, when that happens and the Fed sees that inflation is running a little bit too hot, what they'll come in and do is they'll come in and they'll raise rates. And what they want to do by raising these rates is actually to slow down the expansion and uh, uh, really pull us back just a little bit so we're not getting past the point of, of breaking and uh, th this is their job they're there to can to control rates and make sure that our economy doesn't run too hot so when we get to that hot point they want to pull it back down so we're getting back uh, to where the economy doesn't break you pull us back into a uh, usually a mild recession and then what will happen is uh, we can we can have our, our little reset uh, people will get back to where they're not overexposed and then we can go back to having our expansion of the economy but this is not what happened this last time. So back before the pandemic hit us, we were already in a place where our economy had already expanded quite a bit. We had just experienced one of the greatest bull runs that we've uh, this country's ever seen. And people were already overexposed with their credit. Businesses were expanding at a rapid rate. Velocity of money was doing very, very well, but we were still kind of at this tipping point. And then what happened? We got hit by this, this black swan event, right? and the economy collapsed. We had the pandemic, we had the stock market fall off, we had housing fall off, we had uh, used car prices fall off, but just for a short amount of time. See, after our economy collapsed, what happened was the Fed that came in, the government came in, and they added some fuel to the economy, which was needed, and uh, it started, this, this reset that we had, it started to, to pick up a little bit and we, uh, we were able to actually get velocity of money rolling again because the Fed uh, decreased the interest rates to almost zero and uh, the, the federal government was pumping money into the system to help bolster what had been lost from the pandemic. And then we ripped right back. So we had one of the shortest recessions that we've ever experienced. And I would say that basically the recession that was supposed to happen got taken away completely because the government was throwing all this money into the system. Fed was uh, going 0% uh, interest rates, right? So now everybody, velocity of money was up. Housing was getting pumped through the roof. The stock market was pumping. Used cars were pumping. And all along this time, Inflation was rising at an incredible rate because we had supply chain issues. So now we get to this point where the economy was stretched way too far. And instead of the Fed coming in and raising interest rates or at least not keeping them at zero uh, whenever we needed the economy to cool down a little bit because inflation was running too hot, what they did was they continued to leave interest rates low. And you know what? The government continued to pump money into the system. So we kept going through this expansion, expansion, expansion. And then eventually what you're going to have is you're going to have this breaking point. 
And I feel like that's where we are now. We have this bubble and we're already seeing a lot of signs of weakness and the Fed is going to keep the rates where they are right now and they're going to overstay their welcome and this is my worry for our economy. So because there has been this massive used car bubble, what happens for a dealership like me, we have cars that we sell for like $5,000 and under. What ends up happening is we have to buy more stuff that we actually have to fix. And how we figure out how to fix it is by diagnosing the problems using something like this. This is actually a code reader and I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like to use it. So the scanner I'm using today is actually from Top Don. The reason why I like this one is because literally I can put it in my pocket and carry it and just use my phone as the interface to, uh, to work this one. So it's a easy grab and go kind of scanner. So the first thing we do is literally just plug it into the OBD2 port of the car. And this scanner is great. It does full diagnostics for 60 plus car brands. It does all your OBD2 functions. It has bi-directional control, which is cool because I can actually send a signal to the vehicle to have it check a system for me and then send me a signal back. It also does a lot of your resets and it can do performance testing. It's got an auto scan feature that can actually give you a full health report of your vehicle. You can get four data streams in a single interface to monitor and compare. And I always want you to have a scanner to be able to check a vehicle before you're actually going to purchase it because this can actually save you a lot of money and keep Keep you from getting ripped off from dealers and mechanics. So check out the link down in my description below and use the coupon code to get a discount off of your Top Don scanner. And I want to thank Top Don for sponsoring this video. Now I'm walking out here through my cars and I am a car dealer and the cars that I sell are $5,000 and under. And what I can tell you about this market, what's happened over the last a few years is that the lower end of the car market is actually what's gotten hit the worst. So a lot of the vehicles that I actually typically buy at auction, they didn't go up by 40, 45% like a lot of the other used vehicles. In a lot of cases, the vehicles that I buy, they actually went up by 100%. So back before all this craziness started to happen, I could actually buy cars for $800 to $1,200 and be able to flip them for $1,500, $2,000 and sell them really quick. Those same vehicles that I was able to buy for around a thousand dollars now at auctions they're selling for two thousand dollars so that means those vehicles that i would be able to sell for fifteen hundred two thousand dollars really easily i can't do that anymore now we have to sell them for three thousand thirty five hundred dollars so those vehicles have just about doubled in price and i can actually show you an example of it here at my car lot see this is a 2008 mercury milan we're selling it for four thousand dollars we've got about twenty eight hundred dollars in it but what i would say that a few years ago this would be somewhere around a $2,500 car that I would be selling on my car lot because I would have been able to buy a similar car to this at the auction for around $1,200 to $1,500 mark it up about a thousand bucks sell it for $2,500 but now I can't do that because we got to put about $2,800 in a car like this and that means we got to sell it for about $4,000 because now what we find ourselves in is that inflation has run too hot for too long houses are unaffordable Cars are unaffordable. Everything costs way too much. So what companies actually have to do, and we're seeing this with this fight with the unions across the automakers, is that people feel like they need to make more money to be able to afford all the goods that are out there. So what do companies have to do? They have to pay their workers more money right now to be able to even live. And when that happens, the companies have to pay more money to their workers. That means that their prices, the prices of their goods have to go up. And when their prices of goods have to go up, then you know what? We get in the same situation again, and they're going to have to pay their workers more. And what happens in this situation is you get a wage price spiral. That means wages go up, prices go up, wages go up, prices go up until something, something has to break. And you know what? The Fed is trying its best, and they're really doing their job. They can't do much more than what they're already doing. But because the market has run so hot for so long, there are still people out there that are able to pay these prices, these ridiculous prices for these new vehicles, these ridiculous prices for these houses. So these prices, this bubble is going to uh, continue to remain until the economy breaks. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen because the velocity of money has to slow down now. Interest rates are too high for the velocity of money to stay up. So as the money starts to slow down, go into a lot of these businesses, what's gonna happen? People are going to buy fewer things, meaning that businesses are gonna make less money, meaning that businesses are going to have to, a lot of them, close their doors. And when that happens, job loss happens, and then you have this 
wage price spiral that goes in the opposite direction where uh, these businesses aren't able to sell things, so they have to lay off workers. If uh, people are laid off, they can't buy things from the, these businesses. Businesses make less money, have to lay off more workers, and it just keeps on going down and down until there's just mass job loss across the economy. And uh, that's what I fear that we're going towards right now. And this is why velocity of money is so important in our economy. When the velocity of money is up, businesses are doing good, money's exchanging hands, everything's great. But now, because the interest rates have been pumped so high so quickly, that a lot of people are holding on to money. And when they're holding on to money, they're not buying houses, they're not buying cars, then that actually is going to pull people uh, from their jobs. So another big thing that's gotten hit during this bubble is the, the quality of vehicles that are coming through the system. Because people that have good running cars right now, they're not trading them in. And the reason being is because what they have to replace these vehicles with costs so much. The monthly payments are gonna be way more than they want to spend. So you know what, it's not worth it to them. If there's nothing wrong with their car, they're just going to keep driving this thing until something breaks on it. And at that point, then they'll trade it in. So we're actually going through the worst quality crisis that we've ever had to go through in the used car market because people just aren't trading in their good cars anymore. They're keeping them for themselves. So we do have a couple X factors that are right now in, in the economy that we're not really sure um, how they're going to affect the overall market. The uh, number one thing is student loans coming back due. Um, we don't really know what's that, what that's going to do to the system. We do know it's going to have some kind of effect because people, as far as the, just the psychology of it, people are going to feel poor whenever they have this, this extra bill that's coming in. And psychology means so much to our economy because if people feel like they're poorer than they were a month ago, they're going to spend less money. The velocity of money through the system is going to go down, and that is not good for our economy. And the big X factor we have right now in the car market is the uh, the UAW strikes, right? So we don't know how long they're going to last. And if they last a long time, we don't know what kind of effect that they're going to have because we do know that all these auto manufacturers, they actually loaded up on inventory prior to the strikes. Um, they sent tons of inventory to the dealers. You can go to a Ford dealer, you can go to a Stellantis dealer, you can go to a GM dealer, you can see there's, there's trucks everywhere. Um, so they are loaded up right now because they knew the strikes were going to happen. Uh, but if the strikes last for two, four, six months, however long they're going to, uh, uh, to last to come to a deal. We don't know what kind of effect that's going to have on the car market. I will say it's going to keep prices higher for longer, uh, but the demand is so low, I don't know how long these dealerships can hold out until they actually need to sell some vehicles uh, to, to put some, some profit down on their sheets. Because right now they're not moving a whole lot of metal, so they're gonna have to lower prices to move something at some point. But I don't feel like they're at that point right now, and they're still worried that they're not gonna be able to get any parts. They're not gonna be able to get any new vehicles because these strikes are still going on. So through a lot of my videos, I talk a lot about the velocity of money. I think it is, is so important to our economy, maybe even the most important thing to our economy. Money has to exchange hands for, uh, for, for our economy to thrive. And one of the biggest things that I worry about is the psychology of our economy more than what the actual elements of our economy are doing. Because as more people become scared, the less money they're going to spend, and it kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that uh, people are worried about our economy, so they don't spend money. So now the economy becomes bad because these people were worried about the economy because they didn't spend money. So because people are out there thinking, okay, the price of houses are too high, I'm not going to buy a house. The price of vehicles is too high, I'm not going to buy a vehicle. You know what? I have to pay these student loans, so I can't go out to eat. Um, we're going to cut back on Christmas this year because everything just costs more. As that psychology enters the market, and we are seeing it right now, you can't have a conversation with most people that you're around without talking about how high prices have gotten. It's in the system, it's in our psychology, and it's going to affect our spending habits. And as it affects our spending habits, it's going to be very, very bad for our economy. All right, so I know that there are a lot of you that like to uh, pay attention to my car a lot, see what we're doing, see what kind of sales that we have going on. So I'll uh, have, uh, I'll have, I'll give you an update right now. We actually were uh, pretty slow last month, but uh, we went in and dropped our prices by about five hundred dollars. And you know what? 
we sold a ton. Actually, this past Saturday, we sold, I think it was 11 cars in one day. So um, other car dealers, you wanna sell some cars, lower your prices. And you're gonna start seeing this across the market because what we saw is we were just a little bit off and we just needed to lower our prices and then we ripped off a ton of sales. Um, so there still are some buyers out in the system that want to buy cars, but you just gotta find the price point. And a lot of these dealers are really slow because they haven't found the price point. So we know that prices are going to have to come down for these dealers to actually sell cars. So just wait for it, it's coming. Other dealers are going to get wise to exactly what uh, we have found out we had to do. They're gonna lower prices and uh, it's going to continue that downtrend across the market. New car prices have spiked just the same. Nope, 40 to 50, nope. The cars that are, nope there's been this massive used car bubble. <laughs> mm -mm -mm.